The doctrine of predestination stated and set in scripture light in opposition to Mr. John Wesley by John Gill, narrated by David Clark. Part 1. Dr. John Gill's answer to Mr. John Wesley on the subject of predestination, in opposition to Mr. Wesley's predestination calmly considered, with a reply to the exceptions of the said writer to the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. Mr. Wesley, having declared himself the author of the serious thoughts upon the perseverance of the saints, to which I lately returned an answer, has been pleased to shift the controversy from perseverance to predestination, contending himself with some low, mean and impertinent exceptions to a part of what I have written on the subject of perseverance, not attempting to answer any one argument advanced by me in vindication of it, and yet he has the assurance in the public papers to call this miserable piece of his chiefly written on another subject, a full answer to Dr Gill's pamphlet on perseverance. Any other man but Mr Wesley would, upon reflection, have been covered with shame and confusion, though to give him his due, in his great modesty, he has left out the word full in some other papers, as being conscious to himself, or it may be some of his friends pointed it out to him, that it was an imposition on the public, and tended greatly to expose himself and his cause, since he has left me in full possession of all my arguments, which I will not say are unanswerable, though I think they are, and it looks like Mr Wesley thought so too, since he has not attempted to answer one of them. Yet this I may say, that as yet they are not answered, not answered at all, and much less is a full answer given unto them. And now, though I might be very well excused following him in this wild pursuit on the subject of predestination, since he has not meddled with my argument from it for the saint's perseverance, since he has not pursued that subject, as his title promises, and since throughout the whole he does not argue only harangue upon, and that only a part of it, reprobation, which he thought would best serve his purpose, yet for the sake of weak and honest minds, least through his subtlety they should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ, I shall endeavour to state the doctrine of predestination and set it in true light according to scriptures, with the proofs of it from thence, and take notice of the principal objections raised by Mr Wesley in his harangue on that part of which respects reprobation, and then close this treatise with a reply to his trifling exceptions to what I have written on the subject of the saint's perseverance. As to the doctrine of predestination, it may be considered either 1. In general, as respecting all things that have been, are or shall be or done in the world, everything comes under the determination and appointment of God. He did, as the assembly of divines say in their confession, from all eternity, unchangeably ordain whatsoever comes to pass, or, as they express it in their catechism, God's decrees are the wise, free and holy acts of his counsel, of the counsel of his will, whereby from all eternity he hath, for his own glory, unchangeably foreordained whatsoever comes to pass in time. And this predestination or foreappointment of all things may be concluded from the foreknowledge of God. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world, from eternity. Acts 15, 18. They are known by him as future, as what would be, which became so by his determination of them. For the reason why he knew they would be is because he determined they should be, also from the providence of God and his government of the world, which is all according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians 1, 11. For he does everything according to that, or as he hath determined in his own mind. Eternal predestination in this sense is no other than eternal providence, 
of which actual providence in time is the execution. To deny this is to deny the providence of God and his government of the world, which none but deists and atheists will do. At least it is to think and speak unworthily of God, as not being the all-knowing and all-wise and sovereign rule of the world he is. Once more, that wonderful thing, prophecy, or foretelling things to come, could not be without a predestination of them. Of which there are so many instances in scripture, such as the stay of Israel in Egypt and their departure from thence, the 70 year captivity of the Jews in Babylon and their return at the end of that time, the exact coming of Christ at such and certain times with many others and some seemingly the most casual and contingent as the birth of persons by name a hundred or a hundred of years before they were born, as Josiah, Cyrus, and a man carrying a pitcher of water at such a time to such a place. How could these things be foretold without certainty unless it was determined and appointed that they should be? There is nothing comes to pass by chance to God, nothing done without his knowledge, nor without his will or permission, and nothing without his determination. Everything, even the most minute thing, respecting his creatures and what he has done in this world in all periods and ages of time, is by the appointment, for a proof of which see the following passages. Ecclesiastes 3, 1-2 to, to everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time fixed by the purpose of God for each of these. Job 14, 5 Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Chapters 23, 14. He performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Daniel 4, 35. And he doth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hands or say unto him, What doest thou? Ephesians 1, 11 being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Acts 15, 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Chapter 17, 26, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Matthew 10, 19 to 30, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father? but the very hairs of your head are numbered.